upon his people. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and his blessing shall be upon his people. Salvation belongs to the Lord now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feet, Turning Point Fellowship. Let's give a, a round of applause to the Lord for how good he is. Amen. We're able to be up this morning, wake up, full of life, breath in our lungs, joy in our hearts. Amen. Grateful people, just grateful and thankful to be alive. We just want to welcome you, uh, Facebook, Turning Point Facebook. We want to welcome you to our Sunday service. YouTube, we want to welcome you, Instagram, and every other media outlet that we are streaming off of. We want to welcome you to our Sunday service. Amen. Welcome to Turning Point Fellowship for those first-time visitors, a place where you are celebrated and not tolerated. And you're, we want to remind you, your story isn't over yet. Amen. Your story is not over yet. God is not done with you. Amen. So real quick, before we get started, I'd like to run through some brief annou announcements. May, uh, you may be seated really quick, please. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So we had a great, great turnout yesterday, everyone. Let's, let's get a round of applause. We had a great turnout. Me and Pastor Angel were talking. I said uh, we had about 300. He said more. And, you know, Pastor, he's a man of faith. So he's, we had 350. But we had about 300 people. We had two big rushes. And um, we handed out we handed out about 200 backpacks and and uh, 30 lunch pails. It was a really a really really good time, and and we were blessed to put it on. And um, Pastor Angel and and the leadership of this church would like to thank every single one of you who participated. Give a round, give yourselves a round of applause, everyone. If you picked up a chair, if you brought food, if you donated money, if you donated to the raffles. Whatever you did, we want you to know truly from the bottom of our hearts, you did it for the Lord, yes, but you also did it for the house, and we appreciate you. Amen? Thank you. Yes. Awesome. All right, so this, uh, this Saturday, everyone, we have a men's meeting this 30th. Uh, we will be having it at the Life Center in the city of Santa Ana, and that will be taking place at 9 a.m., so, man, we want to encourage you guys to come out, get connected, get plugged in. Pastor Angel will be speaking. Pastor Nati, there it is on your screen. Join us Saturday, July 30th, 9 a.m. at the Life Center. You could see the address is on the bottom, everyone. And if you have any questions, you can see myself, Ryan, and we will be happy to give you directions. Amen. Bring a friend, you guys. Come on. Come on out. Come on out and get built up in the Word of God. Get sharpened. Amen. Okay, and then the following, no, that same, this same weekend, the 31st, we will be having our monthly potluck and communion. So when you guys come out, there it is. What is it? Italian, August potluck. It's Italian, amen? So if you enjoy Italian food, or even if you don't, come on out, bring your pastas, bring your meatballs, and bring your pizzas, and all the good stuff. Right? Amen? Amen. Okay. And we're also going to be having um, communion that day. Okay, man. It's almost time. Around 90 days until, around 90 days until our men's advancement. Amen. You guys need to get excited. People's lives get changed at this advancement. My life has been changed more than once at this advancement. I've seen people's lives changed and transformed. Amen. At this advancement. It'll be taking place November 18th through the 20th. November 18th through the 20th. So you can see Brother Hugo, Brother Andy, or Brother Fred for any questions you might have about uh, the cost, sign-ups, your T-shirt sizes, all these things we need to gather up, man, as soon as we get uh, close. The, the sooner the better. We don't want no last-minute sign-ups, uh, T-shirts, and things like that. We want you to get what you're going for. We want you to have your T-shirts, everything, okay? So uh, sign up, man. It's going to be a good time in the Lord. Amen. And, and I guarantee if you go with an open heart and open mind, your life will be changed in Jesus' name. Okay. Also, every, the, the second Saturday of every month, we have our women's meetings. The Women of Virtue. Where are you at, ladies? Where are you at? Women of Virtue. Where are you at? There she is. Yeah. Praise God. So every second Saturday of the month, we have our Women of Virtue meeting. 
Sister Bobby is the leader of that. So if you guys have any questions, anything you would like to ask, uh, you can see her. Amen. In Jesus' name. And also, okay, you guys, yesterday we had two raffles with the purple tickets, right? But we also today have another raffle. This is the surprise raffle. So I hope you brought your purple tickets because at the end of service, we will be announcing the winners of that prize. And I don't know what it is, and I think only Pastor does. And Pastor's good at keeping it a secret. You don't want to tell nobody. Amen. So uh, have your purple ticket ready. There it is, the women's ministry meetings, August 13th, September 10th, October 8th, October 4th. So, yeah, it's every, every, month, every, uh, every month we have a women's meeting. You have guest speakers on there. So, women, I encourage you, if you haven't been or if you're new, attend, uh, link up with one of the sisters, Sister Bobby, Sister Margarita, and uh, come on out, Sister Sandra. Come on out and be a part of it. You will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I think I think that's about covers it. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, family, as we enter into worship. Oh, one more, one more. I apologize, but you can stand to your feet, please. In uh, August, September, and October at the Potlucks, uh, they will be having a raffle, and you know you, it'll be announced as we go. But they asked me just to let you know they will be having raffles. Um, in the month of August, the month of September, and the month of October at our monthly potluck. So be on the lookout. Be ready for those. Get excited. And once again, I don't know what the raffle is, but I'm sure it's something good. Amen. Okay. So this morning I was reading. Oh, go ahead, brother. This morning I was reading, and then uh, the Lord gave me this to, to enter us into worship. Amen. It's out of the Passion Translation. And the Word of God says, Beloved friends. What should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercy? To surrender yourselves to God? To be his sacred living sacrifice and live in holiness? Experiencing all the delights he, his heart has. For this becomes a genuine expression of worship. Amen. So this morning, let that genuine expression of worship come out of you. I know we're tired. I know we had a long day. Shake it off, family. We're here to worship the one and true living God. Amen. I'll tell you this. If you're tired, you come up to the altar, you surrender, and the Lord is going to rejuvenate you. He's going to revive you. He's going to give you the energy you need. And to our first-time visitors in, in Turning Point Fellowship, we're free to worship God here. We lift our hands. We shout for joy. We say hallelujah. It's not weird. David danced before the king, and we danced before our king. So we want to encourage you. It's just a different flavor. We're just a different style. We're not, we're not better than. We're not lesser than. We're just different, but we love the Lord. Amen? Come on, enter in with me. Hallelujah. You guys excited? You guys excited? I don't, I don't think you understand what just happened here yesterday. I don't think you understand what just happened yesterday. This is the reason why we're here. You know, the moment I arrived, somebody said, oh, my gosh, there's so many people. This is what we pray for. This is why we're here. Santana has been waiting for us. The heart, the seed has been watered, and God has used you, you, you. You just changed somebody's life out there. You just impacted somebody's family. They saw the joy. They saw something within you and they say, I want that. Even if they're not here right now, don't worry. They're going to come. I believe that. Do you guys believe that? Come on, so shake it all off today. Just be excited for the hearts of people are being shaped and molded right now for his glory. Amen. Worship your God. Hallelujah. Judah, hell, hell to the line of 
gózate, gózate You are the Lord You are the Lord of the nation You are the rock of creation You are the rock of salvation You are the Lord You are the Lion of Judah You are the Savior of Messiah Forever Jehovah Jireh You are the Lord Sing it to him. Shout of joy. Give him a shout of victory. We glorify you, Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord of the nation. You are the God of you are the rock of salvation. You are the Lord. You are the lion of Judah. You are the Savior of Messiah. Forever Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord. You will reign now and forever in your royal majesty. All the glory, honor, power be to you.
Somebody here has got to do something different. This is not just an ordinary Sunday. This is not just an any other Sunday. You got to do something different. Until you got to lift your hands up. You got to throw a little jump. You got to do a little run. Take a little step forward. But something different is happening today. Lift up your voice. Hail, hail to the great I am. Hallelujah. Oh, Sate, go, Sate. Come on, guys. Come on. Worship our God. Worship our God. Praise the name. Hallelujah. And all of you are wondering what's going on over here. Praise the name of You know what I see? I see a bunch of free people right here. You know. This morning I was, I was driving out here with my daughter and we're hearing a song and the song said, wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide. How many of you were back then wanting, w w running from something, hiding from something, looking, looking for something? This worry soul, this bag of bones. How many of you felt empty, alone, and just felt out of place at times? And you needed something in your life. You needed someone in your life. And the song said, and I... This bag of bones. And I tried with all my might. But I couldn't win the fight. You know, when we tried and we did things within ourselves and we tried to do it alone, we can't do nothing. Jesus is the one that gets us there. God gives us the power to overcome situations, overcome addictions, overcome whatever is happening at home. Only you know what's happening at home. This bag of bones. 
But I just can't win the fight. And I slowly drifting, drifting, and drifting. You know, somebody here, I want you to know that the Spirit of God said, you're home. You're home. I was, as I was driving, the Spirit of God said, somebody's home. Even though you drifted, he's right there waiting for you to just slowly come back. And he's, gonna, he's got you here to open his arms waiting for you. So come on in and come on in and just feel his embrace. Feel his embrace. This could be you right here. All you had to do is just step, take that step forward and be free. Be free and just leave it all. Don't even look back. Don't even look back. Don't even worry about who's watching. Don't even look. Just leave it all behind and what's done, it's done. It's over in the name of Jesus. Don't settle. Don't settle for where you're at right now. For he has more for you today. He has more for you today. Hallelujah. What do I look like? What do I look like? What do you see? What are the things that you are dreaming about me? The visions of glory I'm starting to see. Go oh, that the things you see. Yes, Father, send me Mark a me as yours. Mark me as yours. Send me a part. I want everything. All that you are. Mark me as yours. Send me a part. I want
we will hold on to greater things in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we praise you, Father.
worship God. And as his spirit is moving within this room, I'm reminded of a psalm. Psalms 5. Out of the NLT. And the word of God says, O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King, my God. For I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Father, I believe each and every person is crying out. Each and every person is groaning, Lord, just for a touch, Father God, just to be heard by you, Father God. And I believe for those who have drawn close to you, Lord, you have drawn close to them. We thank you, Father, that we are allowed and privileged to bask in your presence, my King. For there is no place like your presence, my Lord. There's freedom in this place, church. Healing in this place. We only have to believe to receive. The Bible tells us that he's given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So it's already in you, family. Amen. So, Father. This morning, Father, as we cried out to you, as we lifted up your name, Father God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, for hearing our cries, Father God, for giving us a touch from heaven, Father, for parting the clouds, Father God, and, and just glazing, uh, glazing upon us, Father God. You are so good to us, Father. You are so good to us, Father. So we thank you, Father God, for this moment, Father God. And we thank you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may have your seats, family. Thank you, Father. You guys may be seated in the house of God. We're going we're gonna to take our tithes and offering now. We're going to continue our worship. Amen. We're going to continue our worship and tithes and offering. We just want to thank you all for coming out. To our guests, our visitors, thank you for coming out this morning. If you need an envelope, you go ahead and raise your hands, amen. If you need a tithing envelope, these two handsome married men would give you an envelope, amen. And, and, if you, uh, and if you didn't bring any cash or a check, you can go ahead and you can give your offering and your tithe through text, amen. You can text the word GIVE to the number 714-477-7777. You can text the word GIVE to the number 714-477-7736. And we thank you for your gift, for your tithing, for your offering. We thank you, and the Lord thanks you much more. Amen. It's about obedience, family, and it's about what's in your heart. Amen. So this morning, the Lord directed me to uh, Mark 12. Mark 12, verse 41. The widow's offering, if you ain't familiar with that. And I'm going to read briefly. This is the widow's offering. Jesus is there. And Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched the crowds drop in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. And then a poor woman came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples together. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions for they gave a tiny part out of their surplus, out of their abundance. They have gave a tiny part. But she, she has given everything she had to live on. Amen. See, family, so it's not about the, the amount you give, but it's the heart you give it with. Amen. Because the Lord's going to put it in your heart what to give and how to give. Amen. And it's about obedience and it's about what's in our heart. So we would like, we don't, we don't take your offering here at Turning Point Fellowship. We receive it. You come and you give it out of a grateful heart. Amen. Go ahead and give in Jesus' name. Don't forget to pray over your offering, family.
stretch your hands forth, amen. Come into agreement with me that we will lack in no good thing and that the Lord would meet every one of Turning Point Fellowship's needs according to his riches and his glory, amen. So, Father, we come before you tonight, Father, God, this morning, Father God, and we just thank you for this opportunity to give back into your kingdom, God. Give back what belongs to you, Father. We, so we just lift it up. We thank you for all those that gave, Father, those that had a heart to give. Bless them, bless them that they may give next time. We worship you, we honor, honor you, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Right now, we're going we're gonna to dismiss our children first, amen? So come on, children, go ahead. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, first time visitors, you can go ahead and release your kids. They can follow our kids. Our kids are really nice. They'll guide them and direct them. Our kids know what to do. Our, our kids will love on your kids. Go ahead and send them away. Send them with our kids. They're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Worship team, we thank you. Let's give the worship team a round of applause. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. So right now, I just want to uh, welcome up my spiritual father, Pastor Angel Baruch. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Shout with a shout of victory. Come on, I can't hear you. Give God the glory and praise. You're alive today because of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're highly favored because of God himself living in your lives. Man, uh, did you guys have a big breakfast or what? Yeah, we get that big breakfast and we just don't want to 
Praise God. Bless God. We should be thanking him for breakfast. Amen. <laughs> for you who eat breakfast, amen. Right on. Uh, just want to, uh, we have some anointing oil. Sister Celia right here. Uh, it's for the Arise uh, Ministry, Arise Men Ministry. If you want to buy a, a, a bottle of uh, oil, she's uh, selling it for six bucks, okay? So if you guys want to go ahead and do that for her, be a blessing, amen, in Jesus' name, all right? I'm sure it's anointed, prayed over, and fasted over, amen, all that good stuff, you know, in the name of Jesus, so. Just want you guys to go ahead and, and get that, you know, in Jesus' name. If you guys got your Bibles, put your Bibles in your right hand. We're going to be, uh, I'm going to be finishing up on commitment. That, uh, that's what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for committed people. People that are sold out for Jesus. Amen. You know, uh, for you first time visitors, uh, you know, our, our praise and worship, I was sitting there praising and worshiping. It's, it's a war cry. We, you know, uh, too many of us are defensive as Christians. We, we need to be offensive, not offending people, but we need to take the gospel out there to the streets. We need to go out there and, and win souls before we're attacked or before we're on our backs. We're giving the gospel out. We're giving, the gospel is good news. Amen. Amen. We're not judging nobody or anything like that. We're telling them good news that God understands where they're at. He knows that they missed it and all that and blown it like we did. Amen. But God forgave us that. You know, and now we're free. We're free to worship. We're free to honor God in that freedom to away from sin. And now we live for righteousness. Amen. It's a beautiful thing that when God does that for our lives. And when you grasp that freedom, when you grasp that freedom of who God is in your life, you're going to live a joyous life. You're going to have problems. You're going to have troubles. But you're going to have a smile. Sometimes some people aren't even going to know you're going through your tripping or anything like that, you know, because you're just going to be all joyful, full of the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen? And that's how we overcome. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and put them in your right hand. Say it like you mean it. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind, is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. I'll, never I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive, I'm about to receive. The, incorruptible. the incorruptible, the indestructible, the indestructible. ever living seed of, of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated there in the presence of our Father. I know that our Father is in this place because the Bible says where two or three are gathered, he is in the midst of us. Amen. Gonna, uh, I'm going to relax with you guys here. Just relax in my spirit, but I'm going to be bold too. Amen. We've been talking about a, a, a commitment and a, what the Bible talks about a commitment. A, comm a commitment is an agreement. It's a pledge to do something in the future, something you have pledged. And when we make Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior, when we receive him, when we receive him as our Lord and Savior, we make a pledge to live for him. You made a covenant with God through his son, Jesus Christ. A covenant in Spanish is un pacto. Hicimos un pacto con Dios. We made a pact with God. We, you can say spiritually you shook his hand. Spiritually, you embraced him and he embraced you. You welcomed him into your life. You know, and at times we try to hide things from God and we try to be slicker than that, but God knows all things. He knows the beginning to the end, the end to the beginning. He knows our lives. Amen? And I want you to know that, but, and he understands. He understands when you blow it. He understands when you sin and you falter. He understands that. But that doesn't give us permission to sin because he understands that. Because he gives us grace doesn't give us permission to just live the way we want to live. Because as Christians, we're not called to live as the world lives. We're called to live as Christ lives. And we're going to go over that right here. But we have to make a choice. As Christians, you have to make a choice. You're committed to God or you're committed to the world. 
There's no in-betweens. There's, you know, there's a, stri a, a little strip up here. You know, I can't have one foot in the world and one foot with God. You either got both feet in or you got both feet out. Amen? Because he says if you're lukewarm, what's he going to do at the end? Vomit. That's a tough word right there, you know? He's going to vomit you out. He's going to spit you out. So we have to learn to keep our word. You just spoke to a holy God. And a lot of us want to believe it or not, you've made deals with God. Right? If you do this, Lord, if you get me out of this mess, I'm going to serve you. Lord, if you give me this job right here, this is the job I always wanted, I will pay my tithe and I, I will give my offering unto you, Lord. Amen? We, we, we make little deals and not even knowing what we're saying. And thank God that he knows, you know, that God knows, like, mm, I don't know if you're going to keep it, but I'm going to go ahead and make the deal with you, you know, and he wants you to, he wants you to grow up and learn to keep your word. That's why here at Turning Point Fellowship, let your yes be a yes and let your no be a no. You know, if, if you say you're going to come to the, to the men's meetings or women's meetings, if you tell a leader I'm going to be there and you don't show up, shame on you for reals, you know. And you don't call them up and tell them you're not coming. And if, if you're leadership here and you don't tell people you're not coming to, to the service today, you know, there's accountability and uh, uh, responsibility when we serve God. We're accountable to him. And we're accountable to one another. Iron sharpening iron. And uh, yesterday we, uh, we had the kids' day. And afterwards, there was about... 30 of us that stood, you know, we ate again, you know, we, we, we ate again. And then about, I say 7 o'clock, 7.30, uh, the majority of that group left, but eight of us stood. Eight of us stood and we put a bonfire out there and uh, we got some coffee and they even went and bought donuts again. I, I didn't have a donut, I didn't have a donut. But they went out and bought uh, coffee and uh, we bought, we made coffee, but they went and bought donuts and we stood here till like a quarter to 11, you know, with bonfires. And uh, I put a question out there for the people that were there for we can have fellowship. You know, fellowship isn't eating. You're just going to go eat. Yeah, let's go fellowship. You know, you're going to eat. Fellowship is talking about God. God being the center of your conversation, you know. So uh, I always have questions that just start conversations, and that's what I tell them. I go, just a conversation. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answers. We're having a conversation. And uh, we, we begin to speak. And one of the gentlemen, he said, he says, uh, Pastor, I, I, I came to Turning Point because I saw there was accountability. I saw that there was responsibility. I had went to a large church. He called it a mega church. A mega church is like a 1,000 people or more, you know, and a uh, he says, I, I like the atmosphere here because you, you guys kept me accountable. He goes, not just in word and trying to keep me in line, but in love. He goes, you guys love me, man. Even when I messed up, I, the brothers were lifting me up. They were calling me up. They were loving on me. You know, he goes, and that's what kept me here. He goes, and that's what keeps me here is the love. And I, and, you know, and I was... I'm going to step away from the pulpit, but I was feeling a little proud right there. You know, I said, right on, man. Our church has some love, you know, that we're, we're loving people. Amen. And that's what, that's what it's about. It's not about, you know, uh, just doing the right thing all the time. We're to live a just life and, uh, you know, justice before God. But the greatest of all is hope, faith, and then what? Love. And he says, and the greatest one of it all is, is love. If we just learn to love one another. You know, to learn to love God with all your might, with all your strength, and all your mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And there's nobody hating themselves here. Because every one of you have your hair combed, you have a nice shirt on, and things like that. So you, you love yourself. And I'm not, I said this many times, you're not, mm, mm, I love myself. Mm, none of that stuff, none of that. But you love yourself, and you honor yourself that you can, Share that love with others. People think that, you know, I've been blessed to be a blessing, but I don't have no money to be a blessing. 
It's not about that. What about a smile? What about a hug? What about a friendship? What about that a boy? Huh? Amen? What about something like that? Just to, to share and love on each other and care for one another. That's what God has called us to do as a church. How can we say we love God but hate our brother? That's the way the world acts. That's the way the world does things. But as, us as Christians... We're not to live like that. We're to live a life that's committed. And sometimes I'm going to tell you something right now. You got to learn how to forgive by faith. You know, you, it, may not, it may not even be all in your heart to forgive someone, but you know what? By faith, you got to say their name in the backyard, in your car, in the shower. Hey, Fulana, I forgive you. Sutano, I release you in Jesus' name. I have nothing against you. Go live your life. And you're speaking and God is hearing. And God will send ministers to them. And God will begin to minister to their lives. There's not one of us that are here today that weren't drawn by the Holy Spirit. Every one of us were drawn to the salvation of God through and by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That, that's the way it works. That's the way the word works. And God is looking for those that are, that are committed to him. We can't be part-time Christians and want full-time benefits. It, it doesn't work that way. You know, when you, when you work for a company, a secular company, you got to work 32 hours or better in order to qualify for benefits. If, if you work any less than that, you don't qualify for benefits. They consider you part-time. You know, but if from 32 up, because I work 32 hours a, a a week when I was out there in the world uh, in the circular job, I was an outside salesman, and that's what I did. But I worked 32, but I qualified for benefits. And I said, yeah, that's great, because I needed benefits. And that's how it is with our Lord. As you draw close to God, he's going to draw close to you. As you begin to experience God more and more, you're going to experience the benefits of knowing God. The benefits of trusting him. There's a lot of people that don't trust God. There's a lot of people that don't put their confidence in God. They put confidence in their own feelings, in their own emotions. And when their emotions and their feelings fail them, oh, I guess God didn't want me to have it. I guess it wasn't God's will after all. No, those were your emotions. Those were your thoughts. That, that wasn't God's word because if you read God's word, God is a blessing. God is not only our faith, he's our life. We have our breath, our being because of him. There's no other reason that you breathe is because of God. There's no other reason that you live is because of God. I was sharing with a young man that's here today, a visitor that yesterday, how many times we should have been gone? How many times we shouldn't even, we shouldn't even be here, some of us? But God's goodness and his mercy followed us all the days of our lives, you know. And he saved us. And I'm sure every one of you heard the call as he was calling you. You were lost out there in the world, lost and no rhyme, no reason to your life. And all of a sudden, you know, someone's praying for you and they've been praying for you. But then all of a sudden, boom, the focal goes on, the light goes on. And you're like. I can hear God's voice. I remember telling my brothers that. And when God began to call me, they thought I was going plumb local. But that's how it is for every one of us. God is calling you. And he's calling you to a greater work. He doesn't just want you saved. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the goal to be saved. But he wants much more from you. He wants your commitment. He wants your actions. He wants your love. And not just for himself. Because God is love. But for other people, for the lost, for the hurting. You got nephews, you got nieces, you got brothers, you got sisters, you got aunts, you got uncles. You got husbands, you got wives. You got good friends, co-workers that aren't saved. And you got the gift of life in you. And we won't share it. Because some of us are embarrassed. I'm raising my hand, but I'm not embarrassed. I, I speak about Jesus wherever I go, you know. But, uh, 
you know, people are embarrassed to tell their coworkers because how they lived before, maybe they blew it, that they can't talk about God. You got to explain God to them. They don't know who God is. And you can tell them, I blow it. I miss it. But God forgives me. He's just and faithful to forgive me all my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, the Bible says. God is faithful. We're not. We're blow it. We blow it all the time. But as I was sharing with this young man yesterday, I told him, I said, God will never call you a sinner ever again. Once you receive him as your Lord and Savior, he'll never say, oh, Gio, you're a blow it. You're a little dirty sinner. He'll never say that. God doesn't speak in that manner to us. He says, my son, stand up and let's walk. Walk with me. Talk with me. Let's understand one another. How can two reason unless they walk together? Amen. They have to, we have to learn how to understand one another. And that's what God wants. God is alive. God is not dead. I drive a lot by myself in my car. I probably drive about 99% by myself in my car. And I know that God sits shotgun. Jesus Christ sits shotgun. I know that. You couldn't tell me no different. I don't care if you try to talk me out of it. I know God sits in my car. Amen. I know he talks to me and, lis and listens to what I have to say. Because sometimes I'm not even, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I'm not even thinking about him. I'm thinking about groceries or, oh, that bill that came in, oh, my God. I'm thinking about stuff. And then the Lord just begins to talk to me. And I'm like, wow. What a, what a trip that God Almighty knows my name and he begins to speak. And I'm sure you've all experienced that one time or another where God speaks to you. But we have to learn how to slow down and learn how to listen. Don't be so quick to speak, but be quick to hear, right? The Bible tells us. I want you guys to turn real quick here. Uh, go, go to Luke 14, please, for me. Luke 14, 26 through 34. Say amen when you're there. God is looking for, this is the word of God, red letter edition right here, Jesus speaking. Red letter edition. I mean, he's, he's speaking to us who are in this room. Don't think he's just speaking to pastor. He's speaking to every one of us. And I'm talking about commitment. And the commitment that Jesus Christ had to his father. He was so committed that he was willing to die for us. He was willing to give up everything for his father that he would do exactly what his father wanted him. God asked us to put $10 in the basket and we act like, oh my God, he's asking for everything. Well, maybe it is sometimes everything, $10. But if you put it in there, God's going to bless you for that. And we're not putting money in there to try to get a blessing. That's just the way the law works in God's a kingdom. Give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over will men hunt you down. That's just part of the palabra. That's just word. What proceeds out of God's mouth will not return void, but it would accomplish all that he's purposed it to do. And every facet of our lives. But a lot of us, we're convenient Christians. We're like 7-Elevens, eh? You know? <laughs> it's real, you know, whatever's easy for us, we want to do. But no, you know, your wife gives you a list to go grocery shopping. Oh, my God. Man. Really? Ten things? Ten things? The football game's on, and you want me to go buy stuff? Inconvenience. Inconvenience, you know, but if she says, oh, just go get a, a half a gallon of milk, you go to 7-Eleven, the liquor store right down the street, boom, pay $5 for it, I don't care, I got to go, you know. We're, convenience. But God is looking for a commitment. Imagine if you told your wife that you're just going to be a part-time husband, Juanito. It's trouble, baby. Trouble in paradise. Amen? You, Imagine that if, if we would just be half-hearted in our relationships. It's not going to happen. 
But we want to do that with God. We want to be serving God or be part of the body of Christ half-heartedly or part-time, not full-time. And I'm right here, Jesus is talking red letter edition. I'm going to read it out of the red letter, but that's I, I do read out of the King James. Thank you, Neil. I, I, I always read out of the King James. I love it. Well, let's read it here. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father or mother, wife, children, brothers or sisters, this is commitment now. Yes, even his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. When he's saying hate, he doesn't mean like us hatred to that. He means if he's not first. If we don't put Jesus Christ first. And there's a lot of us that will raise our hands. Don't raise your hands because I don't want you guys to lie in the house of God. You know, like. If I was to say, is God first? You know, we have to think about it, right? There was a couple I was talking to yesterday while we were here, and I said, uh, are you guys Christians? And they both look at each other, they look at me, they look at each other. I said, you're not. Because <laughs> if you're a Christian, you're going to say it, right? I'm a Christian, you know. There's no perfect ones here. The only perfect one is Jesus Christ. In the spirit, we're perfect. Your spirit man, he's perfect. Your spirit man has never sinned in his life. I want you guys to grasp that. The inner man has never sinned. Your soul man has with his mind and his thoughts, his emotions. Your physical man, he sins too. But the spirit man doesn't. Because we can sit here, and I said this yesterday, because I got to minister to a lot of people. It was really beautiful. And, I, you know, what, when we're hearing the sermon, you know what, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to start reading my word now. I'm done with this world, and you know what, I'm going to start fasting. I'm going to start praying. I'm going to be at church on Thursday. I'm going to go to church on Sundays now. That's it. As soon as we get home, hey, are we still going on Thursday? Well, let me think about it. I'll let you know. That's how we are in our human nature, right? We're sold out while we're sitting here. We're saying, you know what? I'm going to do everything that God has asked me to do. And then when we go out there, we don't. All of us, I'm raising my hand too. All of us do that stuff. But God is looking for sold out. So he says, if you can't put me first, check it out. He cannot be my disciple. You can't be one that's disciplined. Because it takes discipline. In your decision, you got to have a disciplined mind, and we're going to talk about that. Go to the next one, you know, please. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. If you can't pick up your cross, your problems, your dilemmas, whatever, you, whatever goes on in your life, and follow Christ, you can't be his disciple. You're going to have problems, and you got to walk with God. You got to talk with God with those things. God is a forgiving God and he's a just God and he's an understanding God. He knows what you're going to do five minutes from now. He knows that right now in your, some of your guys' minds, you know, oh man, a carne asada burrito right after church is going to be great. You know, man, oh man, I'm going to get that cup of coffee and that Starbucks, yeah. You know, our minds aren't even here. You know, then you tune back in like, what was he talking about? Amen. It wasn't even an amen time, you know, because <laughs> you snap back in, you know. So he says, whoever does not bear his cross, whoever does not pick up his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. This is red letter edition. This is Jesus speaking. This is not pastor. This is the word of God. Amen. For which of you intending to build a tower or a house, some other rendition say, do not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. Stay right here, Mio. You know, just like buying a house. You're going to go buy a house. Back then they build houses. So here we're going to buy a house. You got to count the cost. Oh, I got, you know, you're thinking about the down payment. Yeah, you got 15, you got 20,000 to put down on a house. But how are you going to make the payment? Payments now are like three grand, four grand. You know, I'm looking at it, I'm like, my God, people are going to pay 
dollars a month, they must be making some big money, boy. But they're counting the cost, and we must count the cost to become disciples for Christ. We, we have to say, are we committed to Christ? A lot of us say we are, but we don't follow up on that. And the ones that are following up, don't think you're better or greater than the ones that aren't. Don't walk around all puffed up. I'm a disciple of Christ. You're just a learner, you know. No, no, no. Help that brother up. Amen. Pick him up and encourage him. And you tell him, I'll be your mentor. You tell her, I'll mentor you. And I'll teach you the ways of the Lord through the Bible. But you got to be very graceful, though, too. Amen. So count the cost, he's saying. Before you say yes to me, count the cost. Go to the next one, please, Leon. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him. We got to count the cost because we start walking with Jesus Christ. And it's going to get rough. Your emotions is going to slow down because right now you're on fire. You're excited. You're, oh, Jesus, you know, let me talk to you about Jesus. Let me get you saved, brother. You need some Jesus, brother James. You know, we're all excited about it. And then it plateaus, our excitement. It plateaus and, oh, I used to go to church. I'm not going to church no more. What happened? You were all excited a year ago. You were all excited six months ago. What happened to the fire? What happened to the brightness? Oh, you know, things happen there at church. You know, uh, the people aren't very friendly. You know, they call themselves Christians. Uh, there are a lot of, bunch of hypocrites over there, you know. Well, you just walked away from God. Who's the hypocrite? You know, we're battling. Every one of us battle. Every one of us have a fight here, right? Amen. If it's in your marriage, your finances, your children. You know, right, your co-workers, your job. Some of you hate your bosses. I can't stand her. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Oh, my God. We have to be Christians. We have to pray for those that, that persecute us, those who use us, those who spitefully use us, those who talk about us. We have to pray for them. Thank you, sir. We have to pray for them. This is the commitment that no matter what goes on in our lives, we're going to keep on trucking. We're going to keep on going forward. It's going to get hard. It's going to get rough. You're going to get tempted to sin. You're going to get distracted. Things are going to come up in your life. But are you committed? When things get hard in our marriages, are you just going to quit? In your families, are you just going to quit? Or are you going to fight through it? Amen. It, it, it takes a lot of work to be married. You guys been married how long? 44 years. How long? 40? How long you guys been married? 47 years. And some of us are just starting off. You know, not even hit a year yet, you know. Beat me up, God. Beat me up. You know, you want to be like Elijah, huh? Just <laughs> take me up now, God. Yeah. Now you got to learn something, amen? Uh, uh. So, the, you know, they'll, they'll mock us because we didn't finish it. And that's what happens with a lot of Christians. We stop going to church. We stop fellowship. We stop reading our word. That's the first thing the enemy is going to do is take the word from you. You stop reading the word. Your spiritual life's going to dwindle. It's going to, it's like a, putting a, a, a flower or a plant in a pot and don't give it water. You're going to see it and it's just going to, uh, give it a little water. Oh, it's coming back to life. The same thing with us. As we feed our spirit, man, as we read the word, as we pray, you'll get stronger and you'll get vibrant and you'll get full of the, uh, the life of God. And there's a lot of people that I talk to in the church and outside, they were on fire at one time. 
talking about the Lord and hallelujah, praise God, you know. But then all of a sudden it's like, boy, you're kind of quiet here, my brother. You were really loud just six months ago. They quit being committed to reading their word. We must be committed to reading a word. And if you don't like to read, somebody say, I don't like to read. That's no excuse now. They have the audible Bible. You got what are those little things they put in their ears? Ear pods. Ear pods. You can go for a walk, clean your house, and you can hear the Bible. You can hear sermons. On your, there, there's no excuses. Right? I don't like to read, you know, but I'm the auto Bible. When, you know, when I was driving around, just driving, I, would, I had a CD, and I had the Bible on CD, and I would just hear the word. And it was the dramatized type, you know, the one with the drama, the, the voice and all that. It was beautiful because you could be right there. You're like, man, I'm there. This guy's reading it perfectly. But you hear the word, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and this is how we grow in faith. A lot of people, oh, Father, give me more faith. I want more faith. It doesn't work like that. Faith is in your commitment to God. Faith is trusting God. Faith is having confidence in God. Faith is an action word. You can't just say you have faith without works. And you can't just have all works and no faith. It's a combination. They, they, they work together. Faith and, and works work together. If you say you got faith in God, then you should. we should be living a life of Christ every single day. I'm not saying perfect, but every single day you should be living a life. Amen? That your mind's on Christ, your heart's on Christ, and you may blow it. That doesn't disqualify you. You know, people here, you know, some of you guys still do things you shouldn't be doing. Watch things on the computer you shouldn't be watching. That's not good, but God doesn't disqualify you for that. He wants to get you healthy. He wants to get, give you a sound mind, the, the mind of Christ. You're lying. You may like to gossip. Got real quiet on that one. <laughs> and that's not good, being a backbiter, you know. A complainer, a murmurer. The Bible calls it a scoffer. Always scoffing. Always, nothing's right. Nothing. Good morning. What's so good about it? Isn't that meatloaf tasty? I can't stand meatloaf. <clears throat> Everything is a complaint. Instead of blessing God and honoring God, you know. Someone make me some meatloaf, man. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna shake your hand. Praise the Lord. Come on. So as after he has laid the foundation, he's not able to finish it. All who see, uh, see it begin to mock you. They'll make fun of you because you're not finishing your race. You're not finishing what you said. I have a brother here that when I got saved, Pastor Eric, I went to his house. I was excited. I was on fire. Baby Christian, six months old. I wanted to get the world saved. I want to lay hands and shout in the you know, get everybody delivered and well, free of cancer, free of sickness and disease. I believed everything that pastor was saying. I went to his house and he shot me down quick. Brother, brother, don't come to my house preaching the gospel. Don't. I believe in Jesus, but you guys are a trip. I'm like, what? You guys following Jesus for three, six months, and then all of a sudden you ain't following Jesus no more. You're back out there getting high and getting loaded and all that. Yeah. He says, you follow Jesus for a year. Without getting loaded, without getting high, I mean, really follow Jesus, I'll let you come and preach to my, my family. He says, when I see the change in your life, I'll let you come preach. 14 months. Hey, what's up, Angel? I said, he said, I could preach to your family if I, if I follow Jesus. I said, I went two months past the year, bro. Make sure I lasted. <laughs> I said, I'm here to preach the gospel. And he let me in his house, he said. And he called his kids. He goes, come on, kids. Your Uncle Angel's there. I told him he could preach. He could tell us about Jesus. And they're like. They're looking at them. They're like, oh, my God, really? But I got to share. 
I got to share the gospel of Christ. So here we go. Next one, mijo. Saying this, this man began to build and was not able to finish. He began to build his life in Christ. He did not count the cost. He didn't, he didn't uh, think there was going to be trouble. He didn't think there was going to be temptation. He didn't think the devil knew his past. The devil doesn't know your future. All he knows is your past. And that's why he uses your past against your future. That's how he works. So everything you've done in the past, all the stuff you liked, whatever it is, I'm not going to even throw stuff out there. You know what you liked when you're out there. That's what the enemy's going to use. He's going to use the past. If you're a prideful person, he's going to use pride. If you're arrogant, he's going to use arrogant. He's going to use arrogance against you. If you were a hater back then, a racist, he's going to use that stuff. He's going to use your past to trip up your future. But the Bible says we are not ignorant to his devices. We're not ignorant to his tricks. You have the spirit of God living in you. You have the spirit of truth living in you. So when a lie comes up, you know it's a lie. I was sharing this yesterday, right? You know when you're about to lie? Red lights, bells, whistles start going off. Ding, 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 ding. Lie, 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 lie. Hey, don't say it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And you're like, <laughs> but it sounds so, so. <laughs> and then you get convicted. Why'd you lie? The Holy Ghost will talk to you if you're having a relationship with Him. The Spirit of God. Why? Why was it necessary to lie to build yourself up? Why did you have to go that route? I told you not to go over there. Don't go to that barbecue. Because all your friends that like to potty, the way you potted back in the day, they're going to be there. I've done that. You know, where I've gone to a house and they put one beer. I said, I don't drink, bro. I don't, I don't drink no more. It's all right. That one's a little warm now. Here, here's a cold one right there, Angel. There's another beer. I said, I don't drink, bro. I said, really? I'm saved. I'm serving God. Here's another one, a nice cold one, bro, right there. Three beers. My friends. What I called my friends back then. And I said, uh, I don't need it. I said, sorry, Charlie. I don't need it, man. I'm good. I said, I'm really good. I was already like three years old. I said, I don't need it, bro. We have to be committed to what we say and believe what we say in order to live this life that he has for us. So he says he begins to build it uh, and he began to build it and uh, was not able to. One more. Go ahead. I'm going to go to 34. He says, what king going to make uh, to have war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able to uh, uh, with 10,000 to meet him who comes with him with 20,000. He's counting the cost. Is this. Is this smart that he has double what I have? Do I still go fight this guy? There's people that are going to lose their lives because I'm, I'm prideful. So, no, thank you. So, no, next one. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, does he send a delegation as the conditions of peace? He's thinking about it now. <laughs> Maybe war isn't the answer. You know how you guys all do that stuff. I see you guys on Facebook. Peace and all that stuff. He's saying, maybe we could talk about peace. And when we blow it, when we consider the cost, we can tell people, I blew it. Accept my apology. I missed it. Don't try to defend yourself. Well, you know, I missed it, but the only perfect one is Jesus. Okay, he knows what I'm doing. He's okay. No, that's not the way we do Christianity. Amen. So let's consider the cost. Go ahead, next one. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, uh, then he has cannot, or that he has cannot be my disciple. Because God's going to ask you for everything. He's going to ask you for your life.
I was a heathen. And God asked me for my doctrine. Just like he asked every single one of his disciples. He called them and he asked them for their, for their life. Come, follow me. And that call is going out right now in this church. For us that haven't fully committed to God. And I don't care if you've been following God for 20 years, 30 years. Uh, you've been following him just half-heartedly. I go to church. I drop a little money in the bucket. You know, right? I show up and I help out once in a while. You know, I'm committed. No, a committed life is a life that we live every day. It's a lifestyle. It's not just a Thursday and Sunday that we live for Christ. Every day we live for Christ. And there's no rigid uh, pattern like people try to do. They try to put you on a tie wire. You'll be a Christian if you don't fall off the tie wire. Come on, you got to make it all the way to eternity. Don't fall, don't fall. No, it doesn't work that way. God knows you're going to blow it. But his grace is sufficient. He just doesn't want us practicing sin. A sinner is one who practices sin. One who lives in sin. One who does sin. It's not one who messes up and blows it. That's why there's grace when we blow, when we mess up. Grace is for the believer. There's grace there for us to cover our sins. A multitude of sin. His love covers a multitude of sin. And he blesses us with his life. And he teaches us. We shared yesterday with this young man. I told him, I didn't have to earn my salvation. No, it was with the, the other young man that was there with his wife. Because they're the ones that didn't know if they were Christians or not. And, you know, I had to break the news to them, you know. But they're going to come. They're going to come. They're going to come to the church. Amen. I, I really believe that, you know. Uh, and I told him, I said, you don't have to earn your salvation. It's free. It's a gift. Because if we try to earn it, we'll boast about everything that we say and we do. But if you receive it as a gift, you know it was given to you. And you boast about him. God gave me this life. God showed me how to love. God showed me how to walk in grace. He showed me how to tell the truth. And the sharpening goes on and on until we see him face to face. He's always going to be sharpening us because the, the blade gets dull. You guys seen cooking shows and things like that, right? And, and the cook is about to cut some nice tuna. He has a big piece of uh, a fish tuna there, right? And, and you see that little guy grab that knife and whoosh, he runs it through the sharpener. Whoosh, and then starts filleting that sucker and that, that thing is being cut like butter and that's how God is with us he begins to cut things off of us he begins to remove things off of us where he gets down to the nitty gritty of that tuna that high heat tuna yellow blue tail whatever it is that tuna and you see that big red piece of meat I'm sitting there watching it like man that looks good and that's what God does with our lives as we commit our ways to the Lord. He's always sharpening us. He's always cutting at us. Not in an ugly manner, in a beautiful manner. And we begin to learn to love him. And we don't do it no more because we have to or we think that, you know, we have to walk this line. No. I live for Christ because I love him. Every one of us should have that in our heart. Not because pastor tells me or other brothers, I work with brothers, so I have to live. I, I live for Christ because I love Christ. Amen. 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 So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. We have to get rid of everything. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? We're the salt of the earth, Christians, right here in Indy. We are the salt. You know what salt's good for? What else? It adds flavor and it preserves. That's what salt does. And if we're the salt of the earth as Christians, 
we're to be adding flavor to people. Amen. We're to build them up. We're to encourage them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Throw a little season on that, brother. He's a, he's a little out of whack. So, you know, un poco de sal, you know, now, oh, now he tastes good. Amen? So that's how we're to do that. Amen? And then it preserves. Salt preserves. In the old day, they poured salt on, on beef and, and uh, 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 fish and all that to, to, for it can last longer for them. They would just shave all the salt off and eat what was left. Same thing with us. We're to preserve people's lives as Christians. When we're committed to Christ, we're to build people up, not tear them down. We're to love them, even if we don't know them. I told this little young brother right here. I say little because I'm way older than him, uh, but he's bigger than me. I just, you know, little, little brother, big brother, you know. But uh, I go, I love you, bro. I go, I don't even know you, but I love you. I love you with the love of Christ. And some of you guys can't believe that because you're not walking in the true love of God yet. But when you have the full truth of God's love living in you. You can love black, white, green, tall, skinny, short, fat, whatever kind of person. You can love them. Amen? It doesn't matter. Even You can even love the Raiders fans, you know? Amen? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mess with them. You get all excited about the Raiders. What about Jesus? <laughs> but that's what we're to do when we're committed to the to the ways of the Lord. Count the cost. Because it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your pride to come to the altar. Oh, they're going to look at me. They're going to see me. Oh, my God. I've never done that before. Oh, this is the first time for everything. When God says come to the altar, you come to the altar. You'll never know what, what, what's going to happen until you come to the altar. Your life could change. My life changed coming to the altar. Praising God and worshiping God. I never did that before. I was a heathen. I thought you folks were weird and crazy. Crying and falling on your face. I'm like, bunch of weirdos, man. I'm supposed to sit reverently before God and you know, but no, God begins to teach you a new way of life. So we learn this and we grow. But I want to encourage you guys to count the cost and choose God. Choose the blessings and not the cursings. Choose life and not death. Commit your ways unto the Lord and he establishes your plans. He establishes your thoughts, your mind. Imagine that, then when God begins to when you say, I'm committed to you, Father, he begins to establish your thoughts. Your whole mind begins to change. Your whole way of life, the, the renewing of the mind transforms a life. If the life has not been transformed because they haven't renewed their mind, they're, they're not reading the word. Oh, they're playing Christianese and they got the amens and hallelujah, glory be to God, say that, all that stuff. But do you have the palabra in you? Do you have the word in you? Do you have the word in your heart? Can people see the transformation in your life? And we're not doing it for they can see it. But you know what? When you begin to read this book and you begin to apply it to your life, people are going to say, what happened? What's wrong? Why are you all happy? You were a grouch. You know? You're a little witchy poo. And, and now you got to smile. What a trip. And you tell them, Jesus, I've committed my life to God, and God has changed my life. I need more Jesus in my life and less of myself. Amen? And this, this is how we help other people. People are losing their souls. And we're the salt of the earth. And we're letting them go. When people ask me to go to the hospital and pray, I go. Because I don't know if they're going to make it out that hospital. 
I was in there for six days, and they told me, you got to leave. I'm like, wow, I just had triple bypass. Why do I have to leave? They said, because this is the worst place you could be is in the hospital. What? This place is full of germs. There's germs everywhere. That's why we have a cold. For the germs won't spread. I said, wow, I didn't know that. I thought I was safe. And they said, no, you got it. By six days, we want you out. I'm like, wow, they're not very nice around here, you know. But after that was explained to me, I said, oh, yeah, I want to get out of here, too. Get me out of here. I don't want to be here. God has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. He saved us from our sinful nature. You don't have to sin no more. Not purposely. Not purposely. You, you'll get a, a trick sometimes. You'll get duped sometimes. And he'll use whatever emotion he has to because that's what the enemy uses is your emotions. For you to say something wrong, for you to think something wrong, for you to play something out. See, that's what he does. Got to learn how to stay cool and calm. Amen? Be at peace. Because he says, I give you peace. Not as the world gives you, but as I give you. A peace that surpasses all your understanding. A peace that will guard your mind and your heart. The peace of God. But we have to make that commitment. You can't just say I'm a Christian because you come to church. I've heard that the devil comes to church. You know, the devil fears and trembles before God, but he doesn't obey God. It's up to us to obey God and be the light out there. We have those Bradfords out there, you know. The people are coming. They told me there's 574 doors out there. We got Jesus right here from Westminster, right? Yeah, amen. Came back, amen. We have right here, look, we have four, four different, three different families right here. Four different families, yeah. From, from the, oh, five, right here, amen, yeah, yeah, you know. And it's up to us as a church to love on them, to welcome them. And we have five, we have a young lady behind Nico right there, too. I was talking to you yesterday, huh? Amen. They're going to give you a card. So there's like five or six of them that came. We, get, we have to be nice. We have to be loving. Forget about your troubles. Forget about your woes, Christians. Help a brother out. Help a sister out. Go up and say hi to them. Introduce yourself to them. Oh, yes, we have a young lady right here behind Brother Bert, too. There it is. Seven. Wow, wait, look at that. That's amazing. Thank you for coming out. Thank you guys for coming out and hearing the word of God. Commitment. There's a movie called Fridays. You guys, uh, some of you guys ever saw that movie Friday? I, I, I have to repent. I've seen it, you know. And uh, uh, his son loses his job. You guys know it, right? And he says, Craig, Craig, today's word is job. Boy, get a job. That's your word. Get a job. Job. Today's word, church, is commitment. Amen. Say commitment. Say commitment. Amen. That we could be committed now. There'll be no more excuses. I go to church. I'm a Christian. Forget I go to church. I'm a Christian. You know, because people ask you, are you a Christian? Oh, you know, I, go, I started going to this church down the street. That wasn't the question. The question is, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm a disciple of Christ. I'm learning to be disciplined in his teachings and his ways. It's discipleship. A discipline in his life. Follow Christ. For he's the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way to heaven. No other way to the Father but through Jesus Christ. 
is be committed. Let's all stand to our feet. Yes. Hallelujah. Make a decision today if you want to be committed to God. The decision's yours. There's some of you that never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Some of you have never said, Father, forgive me for my sins, for I have sinned, and I've sinned against you, and only you have I done this sin in front of. I want to repent, and I want to be a Christian. And this is the way we become a Christian. It's not because we belong to a denomination or a certain church. It's because we belong to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So if there's any one of you here that has never committed his life, has never said, Father, forgive me for my sins, I repent. And I want to come into the fold. I want to be part of the family. I want you as my Lord and Savior. If you never said that before, and you want to say that today and mean it in your heart, you could be saved today if you truly mean it in your heart. Today you could go to heaven. If something was to happen, God forbid, but you could go to heaven. So if there's any of you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, go ahead and raise your hand. We all had to do this. You can do it at home, too. You can do it at home. You can do it in your car. You know, you can do it at a park. Father, forgive me for my sins. I recognize that I sin and I blow it. And once you, once you get that confirmation in your heart, you've been forgiven. Now you can say, thank you, Father. I call you my Lord. And there's some of you here that have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. You counted the cost, but not fully. You built the foundation, but you didn't get to finish the race as of yet. Today, God wants to give you that opportunity. You know what, Father? I want to come home like the prodigal son. I want to come home. And I want to eat good. I want to eat well from you, from your table. If you've done that, you, you know, and you walked away from God and you went and lived a reckless life. And if you're living a reckless life and you want to repent and you want to come back home, raise your hand. God will forgive you. Amen. I see those hands right there. Praise God. Amen. And all this side right here is all saved, sanctified, holy, going to heaven. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I want you guys just to repeat after me. You're saved, but it's for the, it's for the mind. It's for, it's for the psyche that the enemy doesn't use your mind and your thoughts to throw darts at you, beat you up with your sin or, your, or what you've done. Right now, you're going to get that all cleaned up and taken care of, and we're just going to walk with God now. It's all, it's all been paid for. It's all been paid for in full. So just say, Father, forgive me my sins. I have sinned. And I ask you to receive me once again into the family. Just like the prodigal son who ran and wasted all his livelihood and repentance and came home. His father celebrated him. Father, I ask that you celebrate me today as I come home. I repent. I thank you for the forgiveness. And I call you my father. I call you my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're all back now. We have Bible studies on Thursday nights at, at 7 o'clock. Uh, right now we've been using our uh, uh, young guys, you know, that uh, I believe have callings on their lives to minister the word of God. So uh, uh, we'll continue that this Thursday. We have Brother Fernando, our youth pastor. He's going to be preaching. So he'll be giving the word out. So I encourage you guys to come out. We go line by line, precept by precept on the word of God. Uh, when I'm ministering, they come with topics. There will be biblical topics. And we're a different flavor. That's all, you know. Uh, if, if you go to another church, it may be a little different from ours. But that doesn't make you right and us wrong or 
we're right and you're wrong. And, no, it's just different flavors. When we get to heaven, you're going to get your mind blown. Oh, wow, I thought it was kumbaya. No, man, they're going to be rocking for Jesus up there, man. You know, they're going to be loving on God. They're going to have some soul, some rhythm, some R&B. Come on, man. Amen? It's going to be all flavors, just like in our church, all different flavors right here. You know, all different nationalities. That's how it should be. It should be for the kingdom of God. So I want to encourage you guys, you know, give us another opportunity. If this is your first time here and you don't have another church, give us an opportunity to speak into your life. You know, again, don't just taste the ice cream one time I didn't like it. Go back and get another flavor. There's 31 flavors. Amen. Go out and get another, you know, come back and listen to it. You may be in a better mood or maybe the pastor will be speaking a better word or Pastor Eric will be up here preaching the word and you like his word. It doesn't matter. We're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all that matters. So give us another opportunity to speak into your lives if if you would uh, be so kind to come back if you don't have a church. But if you do have a church, go ahead and uh, stay there. Love on that pastor. Get connected in that church. And uh, do what the Lord has asked you to do. But if not, here we are, Turning Point Fellowship. All right, we're new in the neighborhood, and we're here to be a blessing to you guys. All right, so uh, let's pray. Father, we bless you, and we thank you for this word. We thank you for the seed of life, that you call it the seed of life, your word. That it's fallen on good ground. It's fallen on the hearts and the souls of your people. That that seed of life will produce life. It'll produce hope. It'll produce faith. It'll produce love, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, gentleness, meekness, humility, Lord. The seed of your character will produce in our lives. We're praying, Father. We're praying for a new mind and a transformed life. We want a new life. We want to get better every day in every way. In Jesus' name, Father. We thank you for the children that are next door. We thank you that they're blessed coming and going, divinely protected by your angels that are camped about them. We thank you for every family here that is represented. Lord, that their homes are safe, their jobs are safe, that they're safe in you. That they can put their confidence in you, Lord God. That eternal life is promised to them. That today, Father, and forevermore, their life, Father, their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. They trust you. They have confidence in you, Lord. And I just thank you for the good work that you've begun in every one of us. That you're going to complete this. You're going to complete this work into the day of Jesus Christ. Let us enjoy our lunch, Father, as we go out, Father. Let us enjoy our lunch. Let us fellowship and not just eat with one another, but let us talk about you and your goodness, Lord, your richness, Lord. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen.